All right, good morning. Happy Friday. Okay, uh, the first thing is on Tuesday morning, we're gonna start the CAST testing. So there's no new schedule. Um, you're still gonna come to class the same times you usually do on Tuesday and Friday. Um, but if you're if you're not 11th grade, you're not gonna be testing. So if you're not in 11th grade, um, you're gonna you're gonna come to the class meeting, and then I'm gonna send you off to your your math wizard teams. And we have plenty to work on. I'm gonna give you some more problems to do today, and um, you're just gonna basically study solving exponential equations and logarithmic equations. So I'm gonna give you today. Um, if you go to your team and there's it's only you in there because everybody's gone testing, you feel welcome to join another group of your choice. So if you want to join another group um, on Tuesday, that's fine. Um, if you want to work by yourself, that's also fine. But you have to be in a team, either by yourself or in a team, because I'm going to be taking attendance. Okay. All right. If you're 11th grade, okay, you're going to be taking the CAS, the state test with me, and I'll be proctoring it. And I'll be going over all, everything you need to know like the, the etiquette during the test, as far as what you can have out and what you can't, um, what you can use, what you can't use. And then um, I will be giving you the operation ID and all that stuff. So if you're in 11th grade, um, this is like an old thing for you. You've already gone through the English, which the math is gonna be exactly the same, except it's the math test. And so, um, yeah, it shouldn't be a big deal. Um, so I'll be giving you all the directions and all the instructions on Tuesday morning. I think that's all I want to say about it right now. Any questions about what's happening Tuesday morning? Okay. Pretty simple. Everybody's going to come to class. If you're not in 11th grade, you're going to take off. If you're in 11th grade, you're going to stay with me and I'm going to set you up for the exam. All right. So the other day we were solving exponential equations on this practice. And I do recommend you do all these problems. And I do recommend you do them again and again until you feel comfortable um, with them. Uh, I'm actually going to show you some logarithmic equations, which your book does not present, but it's the perfect time to show you. And so why doesn't your book do it? Because I think it's a pre-calculus standard, but we're, we're gonna do it because now's the perfect time to do it. So anybody want me to work any problems from this? Did you guys do number nine, 10, 10 11, and 12 on this sheet? Because if you did not, you should have me work one. Uh, could we do number 12, please? All right. Well, I consider this um, to be a very non-mathematical term, and I call it fluffy. Um, you, there's nothing you can do with this until you simplify it down. So remember the properties of exponents. When you multiply a monomial with the same base, you keep the base and add the exponents. Right? Properties of exponents. So is it negative 2x and negative 2x, negative 4x? And is it 1 and negative 3, negative 2? Yes, no. So then when you have the same basis, remember the, that property of equality? Can't you get rid of the basis and just say negative 4x minus 2 is equal to, that should be a negative x. Negative x? Yes. So now see all those negatives? I don't like them. Multiply by a negative, multiply by a negative, multiply by a negative. Solve for X, subtract X from both sides. Subtract X would make it that a three X, subtract two would be that. Divide by three, X is equal to negative two thirds.
Yes or no? Yeah. So you still have to have those properties in front of you. That's why I told you you should have these written on sheets of paper and have the properties in front of you. Because guess what's going to happen today? When you solve logarithmic equation, you're going to have to factor. So hopefully remember how to factor. You have to know the quadratic solving methods. In addition to that, you're going to need to know the product property of logarithms and the quotient property of logarithms. So these properties are being used over and over again. And that's been one of the problems with distance learning is you're not being forced to memorize. Well, put your seatbelt on because in pre-cal, you're going to have to memorize a bunch of formulas. So you will recall them because you're going to have to memorize them all. All right, anybody want me to work another problem on solving exponential equations? All right, just to review. If you can get the bases to be the same, do it. If you can write it in logarithmic form, you have one, write it in logarithmic form to solve it. Or you can take a log to both sides. So there's three different ways. If you can get the same base, do it. If you can write it, the exponential equation in logarithmic form, fine. Or you can take a logarithm to both sides. So three different methods. Anybody want me to work another problem? C number, um, C number six and number seven and number eight, those have the same bases. So you can get rid of the bases, can't you? Right? Didn't we say B to the X equaling B to the Y is equal to X, X equal to Y? Didn't we say that? Yes. Anyone want me to work another one? Um, could we do number 11? Is it this one? Is it this problem? Yeah, it's that problem. All right. So once again, there's a lot of extra fluff. You have to simplify it down because you're trying to make it look like the form, right? So isn't this a property of exponents? When you multiply monomials with the same base, don't you keep the base and add the exponents? And not only that, but aren't you using the negative exponent property here to get the same base? Yes, no? So isn't this negative 2x equals negative 1? And when you multiply by a negative 1, you multiply by a negative 1. Divide by two, isn't X equal to one half? So like I said, if you can get the base to be the same, it's an easy way to solve the problem, right? Anything else? Yeah, I have a question. Um, so for number one, it's four to the power of two x plus three equals one. Would it be um, legal for the for me to turn the one into four to the power of zero? Uh, you can't. Oh, I see what you're saying. Um, I've never done that. And that's actually a good question because um, 
I see what you're saying. You're saying to change that to four to the zero. So that's a pretty good, pretty cool idea. I've never done that before. Um, it could possibly work. L let me, let me, let's just see. Okay. So the way I would do this problem is I would write this in logarithmic form. So this would be log base four of one equals two X plus three. So that's using the definition of a logarithm. I'm converting from exponential form to logarithmic form. And this would be one is equal to two X plus three. And this would be two X is equal to a negative two. And X is equal to a negative one. which isn't right. So what did I write down wrong here? What did I do? Miss Birch, when you do the log base four of one, isn't it zero instead of one? Yeah, it's zero. So when you subtract three, you get negative three. So it'd be negative three over two. Yeah, the log base four of one is zero. Okay, thank you for seeing that. All right, so Seth, let, let's look at what you said. You said, all right, well, is it legal for me to represent the one as four to the zero? Sounds good to me. So you get two X plus three is equal to zero. Two X is equal to negative three. X is equal to negative three halves. And I think as long as you don't make up your own rule, you're good because four to the zero is one. So why couldn't we substitute it in there? I've never done that and I've never seen that before, but that was pretty cool because you did get the same base. So I might steal that from you in the future. I might do that. That's pretty cool. I just never thought of it. All right, good job, Seth. Anybody else want to ask me about something? All right. So what we're going to do today in the teams is we're going to we've solved exponential equations. Now we're going to solve logarithmic equations. I want to look at that. So the easiest type of problem you would have is if you can equate two logarithms with the same base. So just like having the same base for the exponential equations, if you have two logarithms with the same base that are equated, you can write this as x plus one equals seven. You guys remember that property I gave you? Now, if you have some fluff off to the side like that, you can't use that property. So you can't have things multiplied in front and you can't have things added or subtracted at the ends. You can't use the property. But if you have only two logs with the same base equated, you can drop them off. So your answer here is six. Okay, now, here's the problem with these. You cannot have an answer that leaves the logarithm negative. So you have to check it. So all you do is wherever there's a logarithm, and there's no variable there, so you don't have to check it. But if you put a six in there, six plus one is seven. So this is a good answer. Now, let's just, just watch. Could you have 
negative three is an answer. Does negative three make the logarithm negative? Yes. So you couldn't have that as an answer, no solutions. Can you have 11 as an answer? Yes. Yes. What if you had this? Could negative six be an answer? Yes. Yeah, because negative six plus nine. See, I didn't say, I did not say you can't have a negative answer. I said, you can't have an answer that makes the logarithm negative. So this would be a good answer. Do you understand what I'm saying about this? And if you have three or four logs in one problem, you have to check them in all the logs. It's, 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 it can't leave a negative in any of the logs. So somebody in third period, I was hoping they weren't going to ask because I didn't know. I knew I'd have to look it up. Somebody asked me, can you have a zero in the logarithm? And so what I did is I grabbed my calculator and it gave an error. And if you look at this, why can you not have a zero? Watch. If you take the 10 to some power, how do you get a zero? And that's impossible. So that's why you can't have a zero. Because you cannot write it in exponential form. There's nothing that makes sense that you could put in for the question mark. So we looked in the book. And it never said anything in the book anywhere, you know? So anyhow, this, this has to be greater than zero. It'd be a fraction, but it cannot be zero and it can't be negative. It can't be negative and it can't be a zero. Now you don't have to worry about that with the exponential equations, but with the logarithm, you have to make sure that it doesn't make the logarithm negative. So let's make a note. and not have a solution that makes the logarithm negative. If you do, you have to throw it out. So you don't have a log on each side. And guess what? You cannot touch something in a logarithm unless you have a property or a rule or something that gets them out of there. So with the exponential equations, we had to get the variable down from the exponent. This is like, how do we get them out of the logarithm? So how we get them out of it is we do the inverse, which is writing it in exponential form. That's how you undo it. You undo the logarithm with the inverse. So how would you write this in exponential form? Three to the power of seven equals X plus one. That's correct. Okay, now on the calculator, can you tell me what three to the seven is? So when you solve for X and you subtract one, you get 2186. And can you have 2186 right here? Yes, you can.
Okay, now, I'm gonna warn you about this. In some of these problems, I, this is another practice. So this is not an assignment, it's a practice that I posted and it says logarithmic equations. You might have to factor. And there's some problems where you're gonna have to use the property of exponents. And there's some problems where you're gonna have to use the prop the, the addition, the property of um the, the product property of logarithms. Remember when you have a sum, you can change it to a product. Remember when you have a difference of two logs, you could write it as a quotient. And I'm just gonna make one note right now with problem number six. Okay, this was a really confusing problem. The way they wrote it, it even confused me. So if you have a log base seven, there has to be something in the log. So they should have put this in parentheses to eliminate confusion. So now you can divide both sides by two to simplify and then write the log in exponential form. You understand what I'm saying? Divide both sides by two. Write the logarithm in exponential form. All right, so you're gonna go into your math wizard teams and you're gonna work on, it says logarithmic equations. And now you're going to solve the logarithmic equations. Don't forget that you have to make sure that your solution does not create a negative in the logarithm. So you have to check. It doesn't have to be formally, but you have to check. Okay, do you guys have any questions? All right, I'll see you in your teams then. Remember you have your new teams. Uh, make sure you're working the problems together. Try to work as many as you can. Um, call me. There was a lot of people that called me into their teams last period. So I was busy last period working problems. So call me in if you need help. Oh, wait, hold on a minute. Class is over at, what is it, 1210? So I'll see you back here at 12. And I'll clear up any confusion at 12. All right? All right, see you at 12. Birch, I had a question about the example you showed. Yeah. Um, for the 2,187 equals X plus one, would you sub, oh, you already did. Okay, never mind. Sorry, I didn't see that you subtracted the one. No problem. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So it didn't seem like there were a lot of issues. Do you guys want, want to ask me about anything here? Especially number 11 and 17. And number three. Uh, oh, go ahead, everyone. Sorry. Uh, I had a question on number 15. Okay, it's log base 10 of X plus log base, I'm sorry, log base 10 of X plus log base 10 of 8 is equal to 2. So you cannot write this in exponential form without it being simplified. So we have a property called the product property that can be written as a sum of two logs. So you just go backwards. So how would you write this sum as a, pro as a product? So 
So I showed you how to write the product of a log as the sum of two logs. Now I'm asking you to go backwards. How do you write the sum as a log of a product? Would it be AX? Right. So now you can write it in exponential form. So how do you write it? 10 to the power of two equals AX. So that would be 100 equals 8X. And I'm just going to simplify that. Divide by 4, divide by 4, and then solve it. So remember that you have to make sure that none of these logs are negative. So can you have log base 10 to 25 halves there? If you can't, it's no solutions. Can you have 25 halves there? Yes. You can have anything there except for what? You can't have a zero there. And what else can you not have? One. You can't have a negative there. Right? Can't have a negative or a zero, but you can have anything else there. So this is the property, this is the product property of logarithms. All right, what else? Leslie, you have something? Yeah, we had a question on number 20. 20? Log base nine. of x plus 6 minus log base 9 of x equals what? Log base 9 of 2. Well, you can't write this in exponential form. You would have to simplify the left side. So isn't this the, isn't this the difference of two logs? So can't you use the property, uh, the quotient property of logarithms? So how would you write the quotient property? Log base nine of what? Would it be of x plus six over x? Right. And now you have two logs with the same base that are equated. So what can you write? X plus six over X is equal to two. And I'm gonna write it as two over one because can't you set up a proportion and cross multiply? So wouldn't this be X plus six equals two X? Cross multiply. So if you subtract X, is it gonna be X equals six? Can you have a six there? Yes. Can you have a six there? Yes. And this doesn't have a variable, so you don't have to worry about it. So that's a good answer. So make sure you check it in all the logs. So you have to check them in all the logs of the problem. Now, if you didn't want to set up a proportion here, you could have multiplied both sides by X, but um, you don't want to do that. Actually, you know what? If you multiply both sides by X, that it would have been okay because you would have just eliminated the, the, the denominator. You got to be careful messing with the variable. Other questions? We do number 19. Log base 8 of 2. 
plus log base eight of four X squared. That makes me think we're gonna have to factor, but we'll see. So once again, you can't write this in exponential form. You're gonna have to condense this. So we you use the product property again. So what would you write? It'll be log base eight of eight X squared. Eight X squared, right? All right, well, how do you write it in exponential form? Eight to the power of one equals eight X squared. Um, we're going to have to factor, but we can simplify it right now. So we can divide both sides by eight. And now you either set it equal to zero and use different squares, or you can use square root method. So can you have a one there? Can you have a negative one there? Mm, yes. So if you're wondering, how does the logarithm cross the x axis twice? Well, this isn't your normal logarithm. That's a 4x squared. Who know? I don't even know what this graph looks like. But it's definitely crossing twice. So there are two solutions. So remember when you factor, um, you would set this equal to zero and do the different squares, x plus one times x minus one. I didn't do that because we could use square root method, don't forget plus or minus. Now, if you forget plus or minus, you accidentally omitted one of the solutions, which is pretty important, that's pretty dangerous. So that's why I remember a long time ago, I was like, don't forget plus or minus, don't forget plus or minus, don't forget plus or minus, because now if you omit it, you miss a solution. And in trigonometry, you could miss two or three solutions. So don't, don't want to mess up on plus or minuses now. All right. So anyhow, I hope you guys have a good weekend. Um, I will see you on Tuesday for 11th graders. You'll be testing with me for everyone else. You'll be working in the math wizard teams during our normal class time. Okay, any questions? All right, you guys have a good weekend. Have a good weekend. Have a great weekend, Miss Birch. Thank you. Have Bye, guys. Weekend, Thanks, Seth. Bye, guys. Have a good weekend. Bye, Miss Birch. Have a good weekend. Bye, Leslie. Bye, guys.